I am uh, Emanuele Buratti, the group leader of molecular pathology in ICGB. And what we are going to do today is a very brief overview of the methodologies that could be used to extract the viral RNA and amplify its uh, sequence. So before we start, let me uh, simply remind you of the basic principle to work with RNA. RNA is a molecule that is very easily degraded, so you must wear gloves all the time. You have to use nuclease-free water. Whenever possible, you have to remember to use sterile disposal labware. Uh, and all the reagents and equipment dedicated to the work will have to be RNAs free or at least autoclaved before use. And uh, when you're working with RNA, it is always good to work uh, keeping the samples in ice as much as possible. And uh, eventually, when you have finished working, it is important to freeze the RNA and store it preferably at minus 80. So, there are many ways, both commercial and uh, uh, do-it-yourself at home, that one can use to extract RNA. I will start with the first one, if available, and that is the use of the Quia AMP kit for the purification of RNA. This is a simple uh, methodology that has just a single step. You take your uh, uh, body fluids or uh, solution containing an RNA, you put it into this uh, very s s small uh, test tube uh, that can then be either centrifuged or vacuum cleaned. The RNA will be specifically retained in uh, the matrix that can then be eluted in water and eventually precipitated. The advantage of this method is that it can be automated and also you uh, don't need to have any organic extraction or eventual alcohol precipitation. And uh, uh, in this uh, slide I also include uh, a web reference where you can download the manual and the, pro the protocol. Then uh, there are other ways of uh, purifying RNA. So one, for example, that is very commonly used in labs everywhere is the use of RNA zol. And uh, also in this case, RNA zol is a single step isolation of total and small RNA from basically any source that you want to use in the lab. It is uh, a solution that is a mixture of guanidine thalcyanate and phenol in a monophase solution. And what it does, it dissolves the RN DNA, the RNA and the protein following homogenization of the sample. And simply addition then to the water can be used to precipitate DNA, proteins, polysaccharides, and other molecules. Once the water phase that contains the RNA uh, is uh, then uh, taken away, it can be used following alcohol precipitation, washing with 70% ethanol usually, and finally solubilization in the desired volume of water. As with the Quia AMP kit, the manual of uh, this methodology is available online and I have uh, shown uh, the uh, web link uh, here in this slide. Then the third, uh, I would say, commercial methodology is that to use the, the Trizol reagent for the purification. And this works exactly in the same way as the RNA zone. So basically, is a solution that has to be added to your homogenized sample. And uh, in, similarly to RNA zol, it can isolate total RNA from tissue, cells, liquids, and also lipid-rich but uh, difficult uh, 
to dissolve samples. Uh, the advantage of uh, this solution is that there is uh, several, uh, there are several optimized formulations on sale that include uh, Trizol LS that is specifically designed to use with liquid samples uh, such as serum or virus preparations. And uh, as you can see, following the addition of uh, this uh, solution to your sample, what you are going to get is uh, uh, three phases, an aqueous phase, an interphase, and an organic phase, and uh, your RNA will be isolated, will be present in the aqueous phase that can then be removed and eventually precipitated with isopropanol. Last uh, but not least, if you don't have uh, any possibility of uh, getting these uh, commercial reagents, the other thing that you can do is you can use uh, a classic technique of precipitating RNA from samples that uh, involves uh, the use of lithium chloride. And lithium chloride has a, a big advantage that uh, for reasons that are still not very clear, it efficiently precipitates RNA, but it does not do the same with DNA, protein, or carbohydrate. So uh, RNA is uh, preferentially precipitated. And uh, this is also a very good and simple and not expensive methodology to remove inhibitors of translation or cDNA synthesis. That will be the subject of another movie in this series. Um, and uh, basically what you do, you have to prepare a um, precipitation solution with the lithium chloride. Uh, the, uh, the solution, as I uh, said earlier, has to is preferably if you keep it at minus 80 and you always work at uh, 4 degrees. After incubation with this solution, the RNA will be pelleted at the bottom of the test tube, and then you can wash it with one milliliter of 70% ethanol uh, and uh, um, solubilize it in whatever amount of water you desire. Uh, there is a, a link that I have put in this slide where basically they report an analysis of uh, uh, various observations with regards to this methodology. And uh, the bottom line of this analysis, I have uh, basically outlined it here, where uh, it said that RNA as small as 100 nucleotides and as dilute as 5 microgram milliliter can be efficiently precipitated by this method. Uh, it is uh, quite effective uh, uh, the uh, end concentration of lithium chloride for precipitation up to 0.5 molar concentration. Uh, there is really no difference if you uh, keep uh, and uh, uh, precipitate uh, the RNA for 30 or 60 minutes at uh, minus uh, 20 or minus 25 degrees. Uh, although it is advisable to precipitate it at minus 20 for 30 minutes in order to uh, avoid any uh, unwanted degradation of by RNases in your solution. And the only thing that you have to be careful with this methodology is the centrifugation time, because this is a major factor in the recovery of RNA, and uh, therefore in this uh, uh, methodology survey, they recommend uh, to spin for 16,000, for 20 minutes at 16,000 Gs and preferably at 4 degrees in a cold room. And so this basically uh, finishes my overview of uh, possible RNA extraction methods and uh, thank you for listening.